Welcome to another edition of the Battery Power Show. I'm your host, Dijan Ba. Uh, this is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And with me to discuss this important issue here at the National Assembly grounds is no other than Honorable Musa Amul Nyasi. Um, Honorable Musa Amul Nyasi is the National Assembly member for Fonyi Kansala. Uh, welcome to the Ballot Power Show, Honorable. Thank you very much, Tijan. It's a pleasure um, having me this afternoon with your program. Um, I'm really delighted to be part of the show this afternoon. Okay, Honorable, uh, before we go into the conversation, uh, can we know a little bit about you, about you, the work that you do at the National Assembly? Well, um, once again, I am um, glad to be part of this program. Um, as a parliamentarian, uh, we enact laws is part of our mandate. Uh, we also represent uh, the people who voted for us um, by extension, the entire Gambian populace and even non-Gambians resident in the country. We equally do perform oversight on respective institutions. Um, and uh, as a parliamentarian, uh, we also have you know, standing and select committees. And I am in three of these select committees. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, which is the local government committee, of which I am chairing. I am also a member of the health mm -hmm. committee and uh, also a member of the agriculture committee. So if you follow our um, operations at the parliament, you will realize that uh, here and there we invite ministries, departments, to appear before us to prevent the, to present their activity reports and financial statements uh, we equally do go out to see and get first-hand information as per some of the activities or projects that have been implemented by the respective um, departments that whose purview are under us so as a parliamentarian um, these are some of the activities or some of our mandates as per the 1997 constitution. It's not only limited to that, but just to give uh, viewers an idea of what our work is as parliamentarians. parliamentarians. Okay, so now let's uh, get into the, uh, the conversation at hand. Um, so we are talking about the constitutional review process. Uh, so I want to hear your views on the work of the commission, the CRC. Uh, what's your view on, views on the work of the Commission and in your opinion, do you think they have fulfilled their mandate? Um, thank you once again for asking that very important question. Uh, though we have uh, graduated from the uh, draft constitution uh, that was actually brought before us, but answer, answering to your question, I want to say this and I want to make it categorically clear that I have never doubted the credibility of each of them, even those whom I have not known or met before. But hearing what they have been doing, I have not doubted their credibility. That is one thing I want to make very clear. But going further, asking whether they have lived to their, lived to their expectation, I would be comfortable to say, no, they have not lived up to expectation because um, they were mandated to come up with a draft that will supersede what we currently have, which is the 1997 constitution. But in my view, and one of the reasons why I objected flat, you know, I ob objected outright to the draft constitution is as a result of so many things that were embedded in this draft constitution and there was no clear explanation to say this is what the language of this clause is talking of. And uh, being cognizant of uh, my culture and my religion and being a believer in promoting reconciliation and social cohesion, I believe that if the draft constitution was given the powers, all this was going to be defeated. The reconciliation and social cohesion was going to be defeated. Uh, my belief in the religion that I believe in uh, was going to be going to be defeated. Um, our cultural norms and values that are in line with our religion we are we are also going to be defeated. So to sum it up, I will say frankly that um, the CRC 
did not live to the expectation of the Gambian people and equally they, they did not capture key views of Gambian people when they went around the country. Okay. Talking of capturing the key views of, 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 of the Gambian people, uh, I was coming to that. Uh, what, what's, what's your view on their consultations? Do you think there was enough consultation done by the, um, the, 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 the commission before they came up with the draft? I will say comfortably that the consultation was enough because the consultation was not only limited within the four corners of the country, but they went beyond. They even traveled abroad to hear the views and opinions of other Gambians who are residing in other parts of the world. And in the country here, we have been hearing them all over. They have visited all corners of this country and they have consulted with the people that they were supposed to consult. So I believe the consultation was thoroughly done. Okay. Okay. So now let's let's let's. Uh, so um, consultation was thoroughly done, but you still have your objections on the on the on the on the, on the, on the draft. So you, when the um, draft was finally uh, tabled before the National Assembly, um, you voted against the passing of the uh, of the of the draft. So observers or commentators will say that uh, you know um, the, the, that, that, that the draft constitution is very progressive, and it's, it's also the wishes and aspirations of the of the of the Gambian people, of the majority of Gambian people. Um, so, w w what's your take on that? W why did you vote no against the passing of the uh, the draft for referendum, and what are your reasons? You see, um, this is where it always provoke. A debate because you hear people say um, some of us who voted against the draft constitution have voted against the will of the Gambian people. I don't know what yardstick they used to measure and confirm that majority of Gambians really wanted us also this draft constitution. But I can also tell them comfortably, you know, that I have also consulted. I did not just take a unilateral decision because I am elected by people and I represent the people of my constituency. And I'm, I do not only limit it to consulting the people from my constituency, but I have consulted very far. And of all the people I have consulted, they have all given me their position that the draft constitution was not what they were longing for. They were eager in for something far better than what is in the draft. So now, if you tell me that um, majority of Gambians wanted to usher this draft constitution, I can equally say that majority of Gambians never wanted us to usher this draft constitution. So now, who have made a thorough assessment of the views of Gambians to stand and say with confidence that Gambians really wanted this draft constitution ushered in by us? It's not, it has not happened. It has not even gone to the level of a referendum. I got people that told me, frankly, that even if parliament should give the draft constitution their blessings, come the referendum, it will fail woefully. And these are people that have that whose voices are being heard. These are people that have influence in the society. They have their observations, which they made categorically clear. And when I made my own analysis, I am also I was also convinced that honestly I am not seeing this draft constitution as a progressive one because let me give an example when you talk of progress for instance there is a person in the draft that this now this one is specifically trying to address the current sitting president in the event the draft constitution have passed it goes to a referendum and passes then his current term was going to be counted. Exactly. Now, let's, let me just give this example. For instance, if in the Gambia we say, anybody who steals with effect from today, today is on the 17th, if I am right, with effect from the 17th of November, say it becomes a law, mm -hmm. that anybody who steals in the Gambia, your hands, one of your hands or both your hands will be chopped. For instance, it's now a law. Mm -hmm. It has been enacted by, by parliament and assented, assented to by the president. Are we saying that we should go back to all the cells, 
all the all the, the detention centers and all those who are victims of stealing their hands will be chopped because is that progressive or retrogressive so these are some of the things that Gambians should be asking themselves because you cannot bring a law that will take us back you bring a law that will just that will have to start from when it has been enacted so this is this is a scenario of um, the current fitting progress by uh, president in the event this draft constitution have passed all stages then it means this five years is going to be his first term and he have one more term i believe let's leave it open if we say two terms it has to start effect from when the constitution have passed the necessary stages now it's up to gambians to decide on his fate if gambians feel that this is the man they still want to lead the affairs of the country they will give him his votes and if gambians feel that no we really need somebody and not him they will vote him out okay. then there is progress mm -hmm. so taking off uh, the, the the progressive nature of the the, the, cons the draft constitution and some of those uh, consensus issues. Uh, let's talk on two main issues here. One is the issue of citizenship and the other is the issue of gay rights. It, it created a lot of um, a debate among you know people in uh, the citizens and also uh, in, in parliament. So what's your view on these two issues? Well, um, looking at citizenship, the fact that um, we've not ushered the draft constitution and uh, talking about gay rights, which again, um, looking at the current situation, the draft constitution have not been ushered. I believe citizenship has been very well captured as per the 1997 constitution. It has given you the different categories of how one can qualify to be a Gambian citizen. That is something that we can just continue with. And uh, talking of gay rights, um, <laughs> frankly speaking, uh, even whereas the entire Gambia, uh, Gambian populace will give it their weight, I as an individual would never ever support it because my consent will not allow me because I am a strong believer of our social realities. That is one fundamental thing. That is why my consent will not allow me accept anything that looks like gay right because if these are things that even in animals is not occurring, why should we as human beings with our five common senses be thinking of such in a society? What kind of society do we want to see? What kind of a society do, you, do we want to live in? I'm not even going to talk about the religious aspect because there is no religion, as far as I know, that is promoting the issue of gay rights. So this is why I said there are certain certain things embedded in the draft that is that are not clearly explicit of what are they talking of right to religion you and i for instance if the draft constitution is was ushered in and it becomes you know the constitution of the republic of the gambia you and i can wake up tomorrow and say we have we are going to come up with our own religion and our religion is saying you know two men marrying is, is normal because that's our religion that's the religion we believe in so people can just wake up overnight you know sleep overnight wake up in the morning and just think of what they think so, so they may do just to earn something what will you say to the suggestion on that uh, the draft constitution is even more explicit and even more against gay rights than the 1997 constitution because in the 1997 constitution it is it is saying men and women of full age uh, but in the in the in the in the draft in the draft constitution is saying a man and a woman i think that is more explicit and it's <laughs> it's it's more against gay rights what will you say no, no 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 it's not a man and a woman you see um someone will tell you that this is what they are using in the western world because this is a carbon copy of what exists in the Western world. What we have in the draft, as per the explanation of marriage, is a carbon copy of what we have in the Western world. And that is what they are using. That is what they are banking on to promote the idea of gay marriage. But in the 1997 constitution, why are people not banking on it? Because it's clearly explicit that marriage is between a man and a woman and not the other way around. It's clearly explicit. That is why nobody will attempt to say two men can marry, 
or two, two ladies can marry. So I want to tell you that it's not explicit. Okay, let's, let's go to the issue of citizenship. It was also very contentious. What are your views on citizenship? Well, I said earlier on that looking at what we have in the 1997 constitution as per what qualifies one to be a citizen, a Gambian citizen, I believe it has captured everything. So for me, I am yet to see what is missing in one acquiring Gambian citizenship. So um, that's your view on citizenship. So moving further, um, observers will say that uh, the constitution is very, very progressive. Uh, you'll hear people say it's very, very progressive. I've interviewed people on this platform on a lot of occasions. Everybody will say, so the, and, 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 and we'll always cite some of those um, some of those uh, provisions which we feel are very um, uh, progressive, like the women representation, youth representation, people with disabilities. So what are your views on, on some of these provisions? Yeah, you see, um, like I said earlier on, um, there were few issues that were a public cry, just as you have highlighted them. And let me also add the presidential term limit, the 50 plus one. So these are the few that were part of the draft. So looking at it holistically, um, there is no constitution as far as my understanding is concerned. And I can say with confidence, there is nobody who will draft a constitution for this country without having to carry forward what we have in the 1997 constitution. Because we have laws there, clauses there, that are very relevant to our day-to-day -day life. So we must bring them on board. That is automatic, all right? But apart from that, what else have we brought in the draft that people would not really want to see in the draft? Those are the few that I have highlighted. So youth representation, women representation, the 50 plus one, the presidential term limit, it's as good as bring a bill before the parliamentarians and then we have it in the, we have it as a law in the Gambia. So there's nothing wrong in that. And again, I said this earlier on, let's go back to the 1997 constitution. The amendments that people feel were amendments deleted from the 1997 constitution and we need them in the 1997 constitution. Bring a bill, we will bring them back. But whatever we feel have been brought in the 1997 constitution and was not in the original um, draft that was I mean, um, voted for in the referendum. Well, we, we, we get it out. If Gambians feel this is um, not promoting our democracy, good governance and rule, and, and, and rule of law, we can get it out. We can get rid of it. And I am more than willing, I will, I will be one of those who will give it my 100% support because I believe that is what Gambians want to see and a majority of Gambians for that matter will welcome the idea of bringing them back because this having a public outcry during the uh, 2016 presidential elections so um so in essence uh your views are that um, we um, should bring back the 1997 constitution make some relevant adjustments and and move on so do we do we get rid of the draft constitution no we already we are uh, the government is already or the country is already operating with the 1997 constitution so this is what we have as a constitution and this is what we maintain as a constitution and bring on board what we feel is missing in the constitution and then delete what we feel is in the constitution as is, is irrelevant mm -hmm. it's as simple so as that so finally the way forward what, what do you think is the way forward for the for the gambia as regards to the constitution i think i will keep saying the same thing that is um we already have a constitution in place let's see what is in the constitution that Gambians feel is irrelevant, we get rid of it, and then let bills come and have it in the 1997 constitution, and life continues. And then, you know, we continue as a nation. Thank you so much, Honorable um, Musa Amul Nyasi, for, for the insights. Uh, we are very, very privileged to have you on the Ballot Power So It's my pleasure. Yes, uh, viewers, I'm afraid that is all we have time for on this edition of the Ballot Power Show. I've been your host, Tijan Bah, until we come your way again. Uh, thank you so much for viewing. Uh, bye.